Hmm. Okay. Oh, this. I want to do this. Let's begin. So this tutorial is not going to be one of the easy ones, it's going to be a pretty advanced one, at least I think so. I have done like the first start of it and it looks like this, right? And it, I'll be using this definition as just a guide, you know, if, if I kind of lose track of what I'm doing, I'll just kind of uh, use it as notes, right? But uh, we'll try to build it up from scratch so we can see that the, the definition is going to be pretty long in general. Um, and I will not be explaining every single step uh, along the way, um, because, again, I assume that you are familiar with Grasshopper if you're doing the tutorial. Um, one note, though, if you are not, and you, if you're not kind of familiar with Grasshopper, and you're not at this level, um, you can still get this definition uh, if you support the channel on Patreon. It, so the link is in the description, and uh, you can just get that definition for free. Well, relatively speaking, right? You are supporting the channel. Um, so let's begin. Uh, enough blabbing. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create um, like a footprint for the topology of my domes that I will have. Right? So I'll jump into the top view and minimize Grasshopper. I don't need Grasshopper for now. And I'll just decide on what kind of a dome shape I want uh, as, as a footprint fr from the top view. So my thoughts are three legs, I guess. Right, so I will just start drawing a line from 0, 0, 0. And I'll just uh, draw it out to the left-hand side. Maybe let's do F. And F8, I can't do that. My my all of my toggles are messed up. I'll just kind of click that ortho button and type in. Um, I don't know. Let, let's do like a a meter or whatever. Meter sounds good. Enter. So a thousand millimeters. And I'll rotate it around the center point, and I'll rotate it by. Yeah, let's go for ninety. Oops. I need to rotate and also make a copy and rotate it by 90 degrees and another one by 90 degrees again. And this one, probably I'll rotate it even further by uh, minus 45, no, plus 45 degrees and kind of move it in place. Array would have, uh, polar array would have worked, but in this case I have like um, two angles at 120 I believe, no 135 uh, degrees and 190 degree angle um, just you know to, to get something uh, get a little bit of difference in there um, okay so that's my kind of my base skeleton for for the dome and now I'm just going to kind of um, draw draw out how I imagine the outline will look like so i'll just draw a line from the midpoint here i'll say that let's say this leg is this thick this leg is this thick doesn't matter really and this leg is whatever this thick and i'll just rotate it minus 45 or just 45 degrees so that it's it's aligning properly so i have these three legs i kind of want to have them a little bit bigger so i'll just scale it scale up this one to be a bit bigger maybe that's a bit too big scale it down is this where i started i think this is where <laughs> where i freaking started okay promise i'll stop doing that soon okay so we have this done um and now i just let me just do do this real quickly i'll just place like three points here and these will be my guide points for um for the curves like so and you know I, i'm now kind of drawing it awkwardly but you can draw it in any way you want right that that outline in particular from the top view my dome shape is gonna look like this right this this and this is where the dome shape is going to kind of 
rest on the ground and everything else is just going to kind of inflate and now we will be using kangaroo for that of course so now from these lines i will kind of lock them i'll just use lock i'll lock those lines in place from these lines i want to create a series of rectangular polylines uh, that make up these kind of patches right rectangular patches and i'll use uh, maybe let me just create a new layer and i'll call it um patch uh, or, or outline outline works outline layer and i'll just kind of draw inside of it and maybe the outline layer is some sort of a blue color so that's one patch and the reason why we need while i'm drawing i'll just explain the reason why we need um, rectangular patches is because it's super nice to be able to divide them up into any kind of a resolution uh, that that we want right uh, because rectangles divide into more rectangles um, so this way we can kind of get pretty clean mesh topology okay so we have the outline done and i will just look at uh, let's let's unlock go to default select objects from the default layer and just delete them so that i only have the outline left here okay now on to grasshopper this is all we need by the way in rhino for now at least just this now in grasshopper i'll reference in this bad boy uh, so that is going to be just uh, curves crv Oh yeah, and you guys kept asking to use bifocals, so I'll do that. Bifocals, there we go. So you should be able now to kind of see the, the names better. So I'll be using curve component right here. We have that. That's working. Um, and now I need to create a single mesh from this curve component, I, and I want to control the density of that mesh, right? So this curve component, I know that all of the curves are flat, so I'll use boundary. Uh, boundary surface on it uh, to kind of create surfaces on the curves. I think I can just use surface as well. Yeah, that works too. So I don't even need to use boundary surface. It just creates surface like that. That's cool. Um, and I'll use divide surface tool to create um, uh, like a point grid on top of each surface and I'll choose like uh, for now let's do seven by seven something like that there we go seven by seven points and you can see that all of the points are aligning quite nicely that's why we are using rectangles um so we have that done and now we have a bunch of points here but the thing is that with uh, slider seven that's amount of divisions we always have extra one point right so that's um that's annoying but uh, we will make it do i will put all the points into one list by flattening out the point output and i will be using um mesh from points command mesh from points if you don't have mesh from points uh, you can get this from um, scribble from mesh edit plugin that you can find on food for rhino okay so mesh from points uh asks us to give give it points we give it points asks asks us to give it how many points are there in both directions and keep in mind we have one extra point in each direction because this is amount of divisions not amount of points so i will just do plus one um, pl addition plus one so any slider that i add to a b will add plus one to it or you can just kind of write one and then plug it in like so but i think this is more tidy and i'll connect it to u and v and now it doesn't work insufficient number of points does it just kind of work this way no it doesn't why don't you work what's up with that hello that's super strange Okay, well, what's up with that? Divide surface. Oh, oh, wait, wait. But that's plus one. Yeah, that's x plus one. So everything should be fine. 
my god, I'm, I'm messing it up right at the start. Let's try this. Frame 3, like that. Oh, okay. Bam, works. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because we need to trim the tree and keep at least the, you know, a, a single list of, 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 not list, a single data tree for every uh, rectangle. We, we create a separate mesh, right? Of course. So we don't flatten it. We instead trim the tree. That was my bad. Sorry. Don't flatten this. Trim the tree. It's still early in the morning for me. Okay. So we have this done and we have a bunch of meshes here. So I will just flatten them out. Right. Uh, flatten out the output and I will use combine and clean uh, to kind of join those meshes up into one. Right. And we have 338 vertices, 294 faces. What if we just join meshes? Mesh join without cleaning them up. That gives us 294 faces. That's the same amount. 338, 384. Okay, so this does get rid of the duplicate vertices that we have in the seams. Great. We have this going on. Um, and that's basically it. That is us having... Let me make this a little bit less. Five. Uh, this is us creating... Um, the, the, the initial geometry. Let me just take a look at if, if there's anything else that I've I've been doing here. No, nothing more. Okay. So um, we have the initial geometry. Now it's time to relax it. And the way I want, uh, I kind of figured out um, the most s sustainable, let's say, way of how to relax the structure is to do it in two passes. First, to relax it while it's flat, and then to inflate it. Right. So we will be doing. Um, a kangaroo, of course, simulation with a solver, and I will entwine entwine two data branches in as my goal objects. One data branch, the first one, is going to just be show, right? Just show. Oh, and I want to kind of unify mesh normals, um, mesh unify normals. I just want to do that. Um, just to make sure that everything is kind of neat and dandy. It's not really necessary but uh, at this stage, but I like to think, keep things clean, right? So mesh unify normals. We have our show uh, here. That means that after simulation, when we bang, when we explode the tree, the first output from here is going to be our mesh, right? That is, uh, you know, that has been changed by the simulation. Right, because show goes into zero zero uh, into of the data tree, goes through the simulation and gets uh, spit out through the zero zero output here as a mesh, right? As a changed mesh. Okay, so we have that, um, and now for the rest of the goals. Well, before that, let me just do the regular thing, the toggle to turn on or off the the the, the, the simulation and a button button to reset to be able to reset the simulation and now for the goals well uh first thing that i want to do is i want to uh, anchor down these points right here and here and here right um, and then i want to relax the structure um, while it's flat so let's do that i will Probably just create a new layer. Yeah, let's uh, let's first anchor down the points, and for that I will create a new layer and call it anchor regions. Let's see it like that. Anchor regions. I'll make it red so that it's you know not blue. And actually, let's do it in top view. In top view, I'll just draw out a polyline around those anchor regions and I'll make sure that, you know, basically any point, any vertice that's inside of the region will be locked. So I don't want to draw too big of a region so that I lock too much. Same thing here. And same thing here. Okay, so that is done. And I could kind of make it into an, oh, well, maybe we should. Or, should we? Kind of want to. Um, 
I'm I'm contemplating if I should ten ten of ten. If I should do something like this, maybe I should. Hmm. Now nah, for now, let's keep it flat. Whatever, whatever. Let let let's keep it flat. But you can kind of make up any any form you want with this. Uh, you can also pull on a curve that the anchor points can be pulled on the curve and, and on. But I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so we have three regions. I will reference them in here as curves again. I set multiple this time. Click, click, click. Yes, uh, curves and. Then I will kind of make a little bit of space here. This mesh has a bunch of vertices, Vierbert's vertices component, or you can kind of deconstruct the mesh as well. So it has a bunch of vertices, a bunch of points, and I want to make sure that only those points that are inside of these areas are being locked. So I will ask in curves, point in curves, not in curve, in curves, plural. Uh, that's the point, that's the curves, um, and then we have the relationship, uh, either zero is outside and one is coincided, two is inside. I can just straight up, I think, cull pattern. I can just cull the point list with the relationship. Yeah, there we go. So now we have our, I'm basically removing everything that is outside, right? The, the, the zeros are being removed. It's reading zeros as false and everything else as true. That's why it works and why it doesn't need false true statements. Okay, so we have that done. And now let's just make it into an anchor. Anchor. There we go. Hell pattern goes into the anchor. Target is, we don't care about the target. Strength is a 10,000. Yeah, sure, that, that works. So I'll just connect there. If I now run the simulation, it just goes like, yeah, sure. Nothing moves, <laughs> right? Because uh, like these points are locked and there's no external force, so of course nothing moves. So we need one more. Um, we need one more thing that is co contraction, contraction of these edges. And I can just kind of go to kangaroo if I can find it. Kangaroo goes mesh edge lengths. I can just use this on this mesh uh, like that probably can't see it that well let me do this i can use something like this like edge lengths uh, and i can try to contract these curves to a percentage like let's say have 0 0.5 right of, of of their original lengths and just connect that with the shift to 0 1 input because 0 0 is just used by the mesh right the the, the show go uh, 0 1 is used by all of the forces so I have a, like a second, a second group here, and yeah, you you can kind of see, you know, when I use zero point five, it just kind of contracts, and I can control how much it contracts. Don't contract it too much, right? Um, just just let it relax a bit, but not too much, right? Something like this seems seems to be okay. At this stage, I will hide my stuff in Rhino so that it's not in the way, and I'll jump to perspective view. Because now we are at the next stage uh, where I'm going to inflate this thing. So I'm not going to, or maybe we can. Do we make it shorter or do we make it more kind of step by step? I really kind of want to make it step by step so that it's, it's longer, but it's easier to use and, and less confusing. Yeah, let's, let's do it step by step, right? So we have our mesh output here and we're happy with it. And we're basically at, no, not, not at this stage. We are at this stage, right? So the next step is basically to inflate um, the, the mesh upwards, right? To create the dome structure. And that's pretty easy to do. But for that, I will create a data dam just to not let any information through as I'm re-simulating on this side. Hide that. I'll create a mesh component right here. And let's 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 do this. So all of this good stuff is gonna be placed in one little group that will have white color and this is gonna be I wanna remove this from the group. Move from group. Hello? 
Why aren't you being removed? Remove from group. You. Remove from group. Okay, I'll just delete it and create a new data dam. Apparently this one is... We, we couldn't get rid of that one, but yep, uh, it still works. We have our mesh. Now for the inflation. I'm lazy. I will just borrow this whole thing. Right? Uh, I'll borrow the... The solver, the entwine. Well, actually, entwine can be... I'll just create a new one. I'll borrow the solver, the buttons, um, the explode tree, and the mesh. I know that I'll need them, right? So might as well just kind of copy-paste them. And I will also need entwine. Like that. There we go. And I'll only need, again, 0, 0, and 0, 1. That's where show goes in. And where mesh is being shown, this mesh. And everything else is basically the forces that will affect this mesh. So the forces that will affect this mesh are going to be the anchor points. And yep, we do have those anchor points. And I will really, I will use them. I could kind of draw a long wire there, but I don't want to. So I'll just kind of make a copy of it. Like that. Uh, the new mesh connects to the Vbird's vertices component. And basically, yeah, that, that's about it. That's the anchors. <laughs> that was easy, right? Just kind of copying the, the whole um, anchoring part from left to right. And now I want to also kind of grab the edge lengths, honestly. So this is a lot of repetition, I understand. But um, it does give you, copy-paste, it does give you more um, kind of step-by-step -step approach to, to this definition. So this mesh uh, comes in here to the edge lengths and edge lengths holding down the shift key comes into the entwine, like that, right? So now, this time around, my length factor, I will, I will keep it as one. So actually I can just delete it. By default, it's one. I don't even need a slider there. I just want the mesh to try and keep the edges as they are. Right, and it gets converted, and now I will inflate it. Right, so I need to apply. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it vertex loads? Apply equal vertical loads to all vertices of a mesh. Yes, vertex loads. Perfect. Mesh. Connect. Reset. Run doesn't oh yeah uh, actually works but we couldn't see it <laughs> because it was uh, hidden so it kind of goes down i don't want it to go down i want the strength to be upwards right so we will kind of use a a number slider between zero dot dot and uh, i don't know 20 something like that between zero and 20 so this is zero and this 20 20 is big 20 is a lot let's do 10 10 seems okay let's do 10 so that is our vertex loads it's basically just applying the force on each point of the mesh like gravity i hide the original mesh i have the new one right so now this is where it gets tricky right we have this dome and it's yeah, we can call it today yay dome um but the thing is that we need to have every element in the dome behave like a block like a brick right and the rules are let me change this to to black color oops the, the the rules are that the brick it can do wait it can do this it can be a brick like this right it can be um, a brick like this, right? That's fine. That's fine. This is flat. This is flat, meaning you can just cut it, right? This is flat. This is flat. Everything is flat. The brick can be cut with a saw. But we can't, we can't have a brick. Let me make it even more drastic. A brick like this, right? Because this is not flat anymore, meaning this cannot be cut with a saw. So we need to 
somehow make every side of this uh, of these elements of these bricks flat that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge well first of all let's do a data dam like that data dam and let's create a mesh component again as per usual and let's put all of this part into a group another group make it uh, let's let's color code this so let's make it uh, let's start with red let's make it pink right so we have uh, our mesh and it goes through the data dam it arrives here now i want to create a second mesh um above this one right so basically just to offset this mesh right here to give it thickness so i'll use a uh, mesh offset you can use either offset mesh right here or viewer birds offset mesh there's a bunch of them um, i will be using mesh uh, viewer birds offset mesh this one so mesh connects to viewer birds offset mesh i'll actually look at the the, the, the original and if i zoom in you can see that there it is it goes inwards though it doesn't go outwards i want it to go outwards right so i will use a negative a negative value uh, for the distance and for the negative value i will say um so if this structure is like two meters big um can we do like five centimeters no five is a little bit too thin right Let's do like 70 millimeters, something like that. Oh, that's, that's very thick. Uh, let's do five centimeters. That's still a little bit too thick, but we will be able to parametrically control this uh, later on. Okay. So the trick is to first create, um, like for, for every, 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 block that is going to go in between these two faces the top face and the bottom face is going to be a brick right in between them uh, the trick is for every brick first make sure that the sides are flat right and only then make sure that the top and the bottom is flat that's what we're going to do and for this i'll be using i could use I could use the, the Ngons, is it? Yeah, the Ngons plugin, uh, or I could use Kangaroo 2. For this one, I'll use Kangaroo 2. For making the top and the bottom flat, I'll use Ngons just to kind of use up all of the different all of the different plugins. Just to show you that it doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, so for the sides, let's first make the sides, right? So I need to get the edges here, the edges here, and I need to loft them together. So do, 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 edges, edges, edges. What can we use? We can use extract uh, under viewer bird extract um, and, and mesh edges. Viewer birds mesh edges. That one and cut, com, copy paste that one. Actually, this is the top one. So visually, I want to have it have it right here right so now i have a net of of edges at the top and the net of edges at the bottom and i can just straight up loft them can i wait merge let's see how they merge first oh ew disgusting they, they merge poorly okay let's do it this way then um, every mesh edge I will flatten, uh, sorry, I will graft, and I'll graft every mesh edge here as well. So now they are, like, every edge is in a separate uh, list, and also I will use simplify on them, just to get rid of any unnecessary information in the data tree structure. And now, uh, once I merge them, I have pairs of them, and now I can lock them together, and I get this net. And this net is basically, it's not flat, <laughs> right? So these surfaces are not flat by any stretch of uh, imagination. Um, some of them are close to fat, uh, to fat, to flat, but they're not uh, perfectly flat. We'll need to fix that with kangaroo, yes, as, as per usual. Okay, so we have our loft here. Um, 
Kangaroo doesn't like lofts, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to flatten this out to one big happy family, a bunch of untrimmed surfaces, and we will use simple mesh, simple mesh component. And I'm not sure if it's native to Rhino. Oh, wait. Well, it is located under, under mesh tab, so I, maybe it's native to Rhino. Okay, so basically we're using, for lofts, we are, we're using simple mesh components because every loft that we have has four points and simple mesh can create a mesh face from those four points. So we have a bunch of mesh faces now. Um, <clears throat> I need to check my notes. I think it's combined and clean, right? Um, yeah, it's kind of combined and clean. That's that's uh, that's kind of fine. And I just want to see what's what's the strength. Oh, that's a very low strength that we're using. Okay. Um, so all of these separate meshes, we join them up with combined and clean. Uh, combine and clean. Uh, why do I have two? Uh, I know why I have two of them. I have two combine and cleans because one belongs to kangaroo two while the other one belongs to kangaroo one. I need to check if that one belongs to kangaroo one or kangaroo two. Shit, that one belongs to kangaroo one. Okay. I just need to make sure that you know, you, you won't get any errors if you open up my, my, my script. Uh, where, where is the combine and clean? Ah, oh, there it is. Pluck, pluck. Add to group. Okay, uh, that, that's, that's fine now. So, back here. Simple mesh, combine and clean. Everything is nice, neat and dandy. And we want to flatten it out. So, again, solver. And grew solver. Uh, button, toggle, entwine, bang, nope, not that bang, another bang, bang, explode tree, um, mesh will come out, of course, um, show will go in as the first input to entwine, of course, like that, entwine to goal objects, reset, Reset on <clears throat> what else? What else? What else? Explode tree and mesh. There we go. So setting up, setting up this solver is not that that big of a deal. It's pretty pretty easy, pretty fast. Okay, and this is the stage where I need to kind of consult my notes again because I keep I'm I'm blanking out. So we need to make sure that the edges don't change their their length. Right, so that's not not that bad. Then we need to planarize those faces, of course. That's the reason why we're using this. Um, why why we're simulating this? Then we need to lock down all of the points with pro I assume a very low, yeah, a very low force, so that they don't kind of fly around too. Much. And we also will. Lock down only the only the anchor points uh, with a lot of force. Okay, sure, let's do that. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually the the main thing. I will use planarize. Planarize uh, kangaroo two planarize. I don't come on goals mesh planarize. There we go. From kangaroo two. Connect combine and clean to planarize, connect it to zero one input, and for the strength, I will create a slider between uh, zero and uh, 50. I don't know. 50 seems a lot, but yeah. And for now, I'll just keep the strength as zero. <clears throat> or actually, can we take a look at how it's gonna work? I wanna just see, right? I'll hide everything except for the final output. I'll run the simulation, reset it, and I will amp up the strength. Huh. It just kind of works. Kind of just planarizes everything, huh? Okay. Sure. But we kind of still want to make sure that, you know, uh, we keep the 
the edge lengths kind of in check and also we uh, the, the points won't drag too much especially with more complex forms so even though planarize just works on its own i still want to kind of add those security things so let's grab the vertices component view roberts vertices component connected to the combine and clean and here i'll just use the anchor with i believe i used 0 0.01 strength right uh, a very low strength but it just makes sure that the points don't uh, don't drag too much don't fly around too much like planarize completely overrides of course this this uh, anchoring strength uh, while it's at 50 but um, it dampens it's basically dampening right the the the, the vibrations um then same thing for edges uh, mesh edges or edge lengths sorry mesh length factor one strength i'll just kind of steal the slider same slider 0 0.01 that also with the shift connects to 0 1 input here if i click on con yeah then that seems fine everything is kind of working yeah everything seems okay wait why is this still running what's vibrating something's vibrating if it's still oh no never mind it, it finished okay and i believe there was one more oh yeah yeah yeah. the bottom ones i shouldn't i i should not let it move the bottom ones i want those to be kind of really locked in place so for the bottom ones i will just do again anchors um anchors connect and points do we kind of steal the points from here where, where, where is it these points i really don't wanna um and i have those long wires i kind of redo it but then it sucks because we have like four curves here shit um let's do it this way oops let's do it uh this way I will steal this portion where, where it kind of just creates the anchors from the mesh, right? And kind of reuses the, the new mesh for the anchor creation around these curves right here. But for the curves themselves, I will be creating these long ass wires for these ones as well. These long ass wires from the initial one. This was the first place where I used those regions and I'll just kind of connect that to this right so those two regions are connected and now also a very long wire from there from initial start of the regions or initial use of the regions to the third one to this one and now I'll just right click and choose to wire display hidden so that it's not kind of Visually, it doesn't show the wire, uh, wire to me. So now, from now on, every time when I um, want to change the regions, I just need to change the, just this single curve right here. Or not single, but single element right here. here. I don't need to kind of go through all of them. Okay, so I have that going. Uh, let's run it. Let's run it as true. I kind of want to have a little bit of a... You know, I, I want to know if they are actually flat or not. So how do we know? Well, we can just use boundary, uh, boundary surface on these meshes, not on these meshes, sorry, but on the polylines around the each face. Um, polyline? No, not polyline. Where is it? I think Viverbird uh, Bird has one. Viewerbird's face polylines, there we go. Like that, we connect that, and it's definitely not working, right? It's just creating one there, like a, a few there. So what's up with that? That's crappy. Okay, what if this is zero? Huh. Okay, we'll need to really work on this then. Uh, one thing that uh, might help us, is uh, let me stop that um he said okay sorry about that i had a little bit of a meeting uh where i had to really participate so i had to break the video up a bit 
but we are back and let me just remember oh right 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 we, so we had a we had some problems with uh, this not becoming flat and i've built up a little bit of a of a definition here it really doesn't doesn't matter all that i've done was uh, create the face polylines uh, or extract the face polylines kind of ran a boundary surfaces tool through them uh, so that all of them all of these polylines which are flat will generate the, the surface also I asked are they planar or not and if they are if the answer is yes it's basically the same thing as <clears throat> um, grasshopper saying that it's true all right true is the same thing as grasshopper saying as yes, it's one number one so i i said that give me a reverse of that so every face that is not planner will say yes will say true which is one and i add up all of the ones so basically then this panel what what this panel shows me is all of the the amount of faces that are not planner and as you can see it's 330 that's not great so let me reset the simulation and run it and you can see that it's not really doing a great job right so it's it's not not doing anything it's literally like three wait that's not three that's five five faces that were that kind of uh, grasshopper managed to flatten out that is okay we will we will hide this and we will fix it so i will type in uh, units and here i will just say well we are dealing with architecture and we are dealing with architecture in millimeters and the tolerance of it is 0 0.001 millimeters that is way too um too high of a tolerance just see what happens if i change this to 0 0.1 millimeters hit okay hit reset bam almost all of the faces now are being um, considered flat enough, meaning that the, the, the amount of twist in them is less than 0 0.1 millimeters. We can use this, right? I will uh, type in units again, and I will use absolute tolerance of one millimeter, because in architecture, one millimeter is what we call good enough. And Voila, everything is now considered to be flat, right? That's literally how tolerance works, right? So we have our, damn, that's, that's laggy. Okay, it, it finished. So now we have our flattened faces here that are done. Excellent. And let me just kind of, Take a gander, take a closer look at what we, uh, what we're going to be doing with them. Like that flip matrix mesh from lines. Yeah, sure. Okay, let let's do it that way. So, <clears throat> just to clean things up, I'll probably place this one somewhere here, like that. Boundary surfaces. We don't need those anymore. We know that the mesh is flat. I will create a data dam. I use data dams to kind of separate partitioning partition out my definitions right so that they are not uh being calculated at the same time all at once uh mesh so mesh goes in into the data dam mesh goes out all of this gets a group at at, at some point i changed this to 70 millimeters that's fine we will we will be able to change it back later. Uh, oh no, and that group is not white. That group is going to be beautiful green. I don't even know. <clears throat> Somewhere in between green and yellow. Okay. Next up, from this mesh, we want to create the top and the bottom, right? Rebuild the top and the bottom meshes because as you can see here, uh, here here is it here yeah 
as you can see here these these meshes uh, are not aligning anymore so what i can do technically is i can take maybe we should do it that way that's going to be much faster if we take this mesh and this is going to be different from what i've uh, what i've done here but it's this might be better if we take this mesh that was offset right so so basically this mesh right here and the top one right here if we take these two meshes the original and the offset one and we readjust so that uh, this point gets moved to the closest point on the frame should kind of everything should snap in place right right i think so yeah let's try that let's try that yolo okay so what are we gonna do we are going to borrow these two meshes i will merge them merge and i will take um, let's say the bottom mesh goes in first and the top mesh will go in second into the merge list and i'll just drag it out here to the to the bottom i will create a mesh component like so oh and it's for some reason grafted I need to flatten both of these like that okay so i'll take the mesh component and i'll just drag it all the way here so maybe we can can i just do this yeah so if you double click on on um, a line it creates a relay which is, is kind of kind of nice um, it, it's, it's basically a really just lets you kind of make, make these breaks and, and, and kind of lets you disconnect things much more easily. Just double click on the line, you'll figure it out. I, I believe in you. Okay, so we have uh, our frame and we have our meshes here. I will get WBV, I will get Vibrobirds vertices components. So I'll get all of the points for the two meshes here. Maybe let's do a graft first. Yeah, let's do a graft. So these meshes are now in separate data branches. So meaning these, these point clouds are also in separate data branches. And basically what I want to do... Oh, sorry, not points. My bad, my bad. Deconstruct mesh. Basically what I want to do with deconstruct mesh is I want to get the points... I want to move those points to the closest points on this mesh, right? And then I want to reconstruct mesh. So it's basically like mesh fitting. Not reconstruct, just construct, construct mesh. We're speeding through this, right? So I'm deconstructing, I'm moving the points, uh, and I will be reconstructing. Um, so the points will be moved, right, for sure. And how are they going to be moved? Well, they are going to be moved to the points here, which are just WBV, to the points here, to these points. Right? I need to find like a place where, where you will see better. Yeah, there we go. So this is the frame. These are the points on the frame, like the inner grid. And these are the points of the mesh and i want this point this guy to move here right so i will use pull pull point command or or pull curve no pull point pull point and it will pull uh this these points to a variety of geometry to one of these points and it's just going to find the closest one and basically it finds uh, it does find the closest one, right? So 181 points. Oh, wait. Can I just... Can I just do this? Can I just grab the pulled points, right? Because they are kind of... It takes the point and it pulls it, right? So it's right here now. So I don't really need to move it. Can I just take it and kind of uh, simplify and just connect it like so? And then face connects here. Yes, I can. Oh, my God. This is much more... Uh, convenient the word that i'm looking for is convenient so we have this uh that's that's working right now and our meshes were adjusted yay 
right? Now they are following the inner frame. Good. So since we have them, eh, since we have them adjusted, what's still showing up? This is still showing up. Since we have them adjusted, um, now I know that in between these two two meshes, the the, the frame is um, at a flat, right? So the, the panels are flat, or at least within the one millimeter distance. And I still have these two frames at uh, as two separate it, within the two separate data branches. Let me simplify so you can see it here, and also I can kind of show it in the panel. Two separate data branches with uh, one mesh, and I believe the top one is the bottom one. <laughs> oh god damn it, that's gonna be confusing. Well, the first mesh is the bottom one, and the second mesh is the top one. Bottom top. Okay. So let us let us create the blocks, right? I, th I think it's time. I think it's time. Let's um, explode the meshes. Mesh explode. Bam. We get the faces. I think that's the way to do it. Wait a minute. So we're okay. Essentially, what we done is we cut. Did we? That 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 that. I'm trying sorry I'm, I'm i'm just trying to figure out what the hell is going on mm. right okay cool 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 so essentially we've just kind of i believe we have cut all of this out of the equation right with just this i'm pretty proud of that because this was much more manual, uh, finding closest points and so on, rotating polylines, blah, blah, blah. So now we are, we are here. And for this portion, we will be using what's called, uh, uh, what, what's, uh, what is called uh, 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 Angons plugin, right? So for that, actually, I don't need to construct, uh, sorry, to, to explode the meshes. I can just simply flatten out the output and use mesh join to join the meshes into into a list and i think that is going to be enough i hope that is going to be enough let's see okay so we have that and let us use the ngon plugin this is a pretty pretty good plugin and it keeps getting updates so i suggest you have it installed it has like possibility to make joints and so on the documentation is fine it's it's okay and it's it's pretty hard to start using it uh, because things are not explained that well uh, but but the plugin itself is really really uh, good in my opinion really strong so for, for the plugin itself, I will be using Planarize uh, tab. And here I'll use Project Pairs tool. Project Pairs, which basically just uh, selects uh, two faces and projects them uh, so that they are flat to one another, right? And what this does, actually, what this does, first of all, the, 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 the pairs of faces are going to become flat right second of all they are going to become parallel to each other though those are two very important things i believe they are going to become parallel um, so eventually as it's projecting every face we will get this these scales right the scaling effect uh, is there like a close-up uh, closer close-up hello there we go these scales, as, as you can see, like each phase has been projected, meaning that the continuity breaks because you do need to break something to get rid of the, the twist, right? And in this case, uh, we are, we're kind of breaking the continuity. Okay, so we have uh, two meshes joined up and these are like um, exact copies of one another, topologically speaking, right? This is, let's say this is phase one, meaning this is phase two and... Uh, 
project pairs needs that. It needs like both of these uh, meshes to have faces in exactly the same uh, or, or the correct positions. We have that. Uh, I'll just connect it to project pairs like that. Very simple. Second is scale. And here it's just basically scaling from 0 to 1. Right, so I will just create a slider that says 0 0.5, put, put it all the way to 0, connect it to scale, and start increasing it. 1, hide that, and the output is an empty mesh. What the? Does it need to be uh, N-Gon? It might need to be a native, um, native format of uh, of this uh, this particular plugin this is what i'm talking about by the way in terms of usability okay so if it needs to be an ngon then we can kind of easily create an ngon from it if we just uh, is it easy to create an ngon from it yeah i think so we just need to get uh, boundaries face boundaries hello face boundaries oh my god um do you have like something that's that's close to boundaries edge and gone edges and gone face edges can i use that no that's those are separate lines face and gone faces sensors uh, graph Oh my god. Oh, there we go. And gone from mesh. That can be useful. Hopefully. Let's try. And gone from mesh. Okay, so it creates an ngon, uh, like two two mesh ngons, joins them up. And now this works? Question mark. Just flattens everything out. Oh my god. What the hell is going on? oh understood okay so it's being it's being smart about it Angon is basically a mesh that has more than four vertices right uh, a mesh face that has more than four vertices so this just <laughs> this just treats the whole damn thing as a single Angon and just flattens it out. okay i guess uh, time to see me struggle um let's go and create analysis uh, phase boundaries let's get some phase boundaries up in here uh, so we have 150 phase boundaries for each of these uh, meshes and then go back to the ngon plugin go to face and no not to face to edge no not to that as well where are you hidden all lines to polygons maybe here God, please, please, please. Polygon. Uh, already looked at it. And guns. Um, from polylines. There we go. From polylines. This work. There we go. Does work. Um, and now I, I assume I can just join these up. Mesh join. Right. Flatten them up, and join them up again. And now it works. At least it seems like it works. Let's hope that it works. Idea. Custom preview. Let's just look at it. Color swatch. Oh, it's welded. Ew. Um, of course, it's welded. So the, the, the preview is welded. I'll come back to this. Uh, oh, sorry. To this and explain what, what I did here. But first, let's make it pretty um there's this kind of weld mesh component here that we can use so weld mesh component asks you for a mesh and it asks you for a radius for welding and i believe does it say anything here it just says description of course it does user tree align uh, okay sure um come on come on petrus documentation please more 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 information here i believe minus one will work right right 
if I just delete that or or not delete that sorry if I look at it this way no it doesn't how did I make it work here because I, I made it work what did I use here minus three okay sure I think I just was uh, going through the numbers minus three yeah sure minus three works <laughs> That's super weird. Um, so that's minus three. And if I change the swatch color uh, to something like this, you can start seeing the the flakes, right? The gaps that, that are appearing. And that's that's cool, I think. That's I find it that I find that to be very, very cool. Uh let's Let's make it more drastic. So the first thing is this is a fat boy. This is too fat. I want it to be less fat. Um, so I'm going to change up the thickness of it to, let, let's say, 40. A little bit above half of it. And I will reset the simulation here. And it does the thing, and it will stop doing the thing right now. There we go. So there's, I, I always check this. It's a zero. If it's a zero, that means everything is flat. I press play. And it does the whole shebang, and now everything is thinner and scaly, still scaly. We will kind of mess around with it a little bit later later on, but for now, this seems to be kind of cool, kind of good. All right, uh, so that is done. I can kind of hide this. Maybe we don't even want to hide this. I can just delete it, probably. Oh, let's keep it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm... Uh, all over the place okay so we have our projected pairs we have our meshes right and since all of these meshes are flat are they flat yes yes now they are all flat the top the bottom this and the sides all of them are flat or rather within one millimeter error right we can kind of mess around with them i'm just kind of looking at what we have here we can kind of mess around with them and first of all i of course i want to rebuild them into nerves poly surfaces right so that's uh, where i use uh, polylines that i get from project pairs because it also spews out polylines so i can and you can see it it spews out pairs of polylines so top and bottom polyline so I can, um, do we do data dam? Yeah, let's do data dam. I'll just do curve, curve component here, data dam, like so, like here, curve component again, just so that I kind of, I always do this, uh, I don't know, helps me to keep track of what the hell is going on. Um, like that, that's a data dam, so I'm not grouping that this and this was yellow so this one we will make <laughs> please color uh this one we will make oh beautiful green nice okay so we have those curves and let me hide everything so that you can see what what we're dealing with we have these curves i can make them i can now make boundary surfaces from them right yay surfaces and also i can make lofts from them because they are in pairs, right? So I can make lofts from them as well. Yay, lofts. And basically, at this point, I can start messing around quite a bit with this. Um, the last thing that I want to do is joints, right? Uh, make some sort of joints. And there's like many different possibilities for, for joints. I'm going to do something super simple. Uh, because the tutorial is al already pretty pretty long and you can re replace the joints with anything you want. As long as you're using a grid-based structure, meaning as long as you're using quads and not hexagons, uh, something like a checkerbox pattern will work quite well. So what I mean by that is we have this relay here and I don't... Let's create a mesh component and connect relay to this mesh component. And this really here basically is just, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Uh, this really here is just um, 
just holds uh, the top and the bottom mesh before the planarization happened, right? So I'll just kind of drag it out here. So yeah, that that, that seems to be fine. Um, I don't know where to put it. Maybe here, right? And from this, uh, these two meshes, I'll just select the bottom one or the top one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, they're kind of the same topologically. So I'll just use list item like that. It gives me the bottom one. Sure, I'll use it, right? So so we're working with the bottom one. And let me hide this for a bit, right? And I want to have male female join, joints, right? So so. Things that stick out and things and, and holes for them to, to, to stick into, right? Well, that's a super awkward explanation. Sorry about that. But yeah, male, female joins, right? And I want every other uh, element to have male joins and every other element to have female joins. Yes, yes, exactly. So checkerbox, uh, think of it as checkerbox pattern, right? And actually, that's exactly what we're going to be using. Um, coincidence? I think not. If we go to mesh, uh, uh, kangaroo uh, mesh uh, toolbox, here we see checkerbo checkerboard, not checkerbox, checkerboard uh, tool. And we use that like so. That's it. Uh, what it generates is basically a list of uh, zeros and ones, right? And we can use that list to. Do I show you? Yeah, let's uh, let me just quickly show you. I'll explode the mesh. That's the a weird explode. I don't know how it works. I'm scared of it. Explode mesh. Uh, let's use the regular one. So I have all of the faces separated, and now I can use this patch. Uh, so I dispatch these faces with the checkerboard pattern that I have generated and I can do custom preview for let's say list output a and voila every other face has has the checkerboard that has the checkerboard pattern yay okay so that's uh, that's how it works but we don't want to use it on the faces right the, the dispatch rather we want to use it on the on come on one get minutes you can do it on this uh, list of boundary surfaces and lofts right on, on on these two data trees that correspond to the elements themselves the bricks Right, so that's going to be a little bit more tricky because these are data trees. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify, simplify. I'm sorry, about that. I'm going to kind of switch them around so that the loft is in the top, and I'm going to merge them to, into one list. Sorry, uh, like that, like that. Right. So now I have um, a kind of look at it with a panel. I have a loft um, for the first, like the, the perimeter of the first brick, the bottom of the first brick, the top of the first brick, the perimeter of the second brick, the bottom of the first, uh, second brick, the top of the second brick, and so on, right? And separate data branches. So I want those branches to be separated into two outputs, A and B. And for that, I will be using data, uh, no, uh, tree statistics statistics uh, so I get the paths right and I will use the dispatch for the paths list so I have like um, a checkerbox pattern for the paths of the data tree, data tree and then I can use a tree item tree item no uh, not tree item tree branch yes the the word is tree branch to get um no 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 so the tree is this bad boy right here you know the actual geometry and the branch is let's say paths a right and technically speaking if i now hide everything here and it's not in the way Yay! Uh, tree branch uh, from from dispatch A is the first like part of the checkerbox pattern, and 
if I copy and paste three branch from branch B is the second pattern, right? Cool. Uh, this is gonna be the papa, this is gonna be the mama. Right? The, so the papa is going to be positive, mama is gonna be negative. Um, like plug and a hole, think of it that way. So for the papa, what, what I wanna do, uh, let me kinda model it out so that we're, we're clear on what I'm trying to, to accomplish. We have a break, right? Oops, we have a break, right? And we are going to get a hexagon in there, or maybe a few. A few hexagons like that. We rotate them, something like that. We will um, kind of extrude the hexagons, maybe. A curve. Yeah, something like that, and maybe make it scale down. Why don't you scale? Uh, okay, sure, let's do it this way. So we copy and then we... Hello? Scale. There we go. We scale it down. Loft. So we, we, we kind of do this... Bleh. We kind of do this for... Uh, every side for for the papas and we do a negative of it for for the mamas right so it's it's gonna be a hole and uh, that should be it that should do the trick right let's try um ba -ba -ba -ba. nope yep and i'm not going to work with tolerances at all uh so so the hexagons are gonna be the same size wherever Okay, uh, so I said these are papas, right? Um, we need to list item and to get only the perimeters. Uh, let me hide the moments for a bit. We need to get only the perimeters um, with the uh, fr from from this from each of these branches, right? So we have these uh, faces, and we will uh, deconstruct B rep to only get. Uh, not to only get, but to basically explode each face, right? So we have four faces in each list. And for each face, we need to get we need to get two points. Let's do it this way. Evaluate um, evaluate surface. So we are evaluating every surface. Do we do that separately? Yeah, let's separate them, right? So so I will graft. Oops, that's flattened. That's not graft. I will graft it. Uh, grab the output so every surface now is separated and basically I'm evaluating them and I will use UV coordinates and the way UV coordinates work are basically it's 0, 0 is bottom left corner, 1, 1 is top right corner, 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 is the middle so I'll start with that 0 0.5 uh, point 5 comma 0 0.5 in the middle connect to UV you can see that it's just a mess. It it does nothing close to, to giving me the middle points. And the reason for that is I need to right click on the S input and choose to reparameterize. And now it does give me the middle points. If you don't know what reparameterize is, what the hell are you doing in this uh, grasshopper tutorial? This is not for you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but seriously, it's it's a pretty basic thing. You should know what, what it is. But um, the problem that we have now is that we only get one point. I need two points. I want one point here and one point here. Uh, here, at one third and at one third. If I change this to zero point five comma zero point three three, I do get one point here, but I need another one. Another one that holding down the shift key I can plug in, and this one will be zero point six six, right here. So I have two points. Yay! That works. Okay, we have those two points, and uh, basically those two points give us uh, the normal, the U, V uh, values, and more, most importantly, the frame, right? The frame is going to be something that we're going to be using. And I'm basically just going to create a polygon around the frame, like that. We have our, uh, our polygons. They are super small. I don't... I need to see... Yeah, they are super small. Let's increase the radius. The radius will be like 5. 
Okay, 5 is not that much. Uh, let's do radius of 15. Okay, 15 is too much. <laughs> let's do radius of 10. Okay, 10 seems to be the, the, the sweet spot. We are sticking to 10. Okay, so that is our polygons. And now I want to make a hole in this in these surfaces with these polygons. I could use trim, but I don't I don't wanna. Instead, I will um, get wires. B rep wireframe from this uh, from these faces, or I could get edges, but who cares? I'll get wires. I'll join them up uh, into, or maybe I don't even need to join them up. I just have have the wires here. Uh, that that kind of works. Simplify that. Simplify the polygons, and I believe if I just plug both of these into uh, boundary surfaces, that, sh that should work, right? right yeah that works okay so now i can get rid of the original one <clears throat> now i have holes here yay we have holes um that's not enough right we need to also wait i'm thinking uh we need to give it some thickness uh, okay so these polygons need to be moved along a vector and that vector is going to be the normal right and the normal will have some sort of an amplitude and that amplitude is going to be by how much are we moving these uh, these polygons away from from the from the blocks uh, so uh, the amplitude is going to be like um and again, I don't know. Let's let's do 10 and connect it just to see what's what's gonna happen. Okay, so it does that. Oh it's almost hitting each other here. What happens? Oh no. That's a problem. That's that's uh, that's a problem. We need to make sure that, that doesn't happen. <clears throat> yeah. Radius eight. Okay, uh, so they are moving out, that's great. And we are going to just kind of <clears throat> scale. Do scale on them, on the move geometry, and the center point is going to be the centroid of that geometry. Um, let's just measure area, that's gonna be fastest. No, but it's taking too long, let's measure uh, polygon centroid, right? Polygon center. Bam, CV goes into C, and then by how much do we scale it? I think like to something like 0 0.2, like to 20% of the original size. So it's a spiky boy, maybe 0 0.3. So it's less of a spiky boy. Okay, so we have our original polygons, we have our scaled polygons, right? Uh, we need to do a loft. We need to do a loft. And loft will not work for, for these two because I need to do, I need to graft them, right? So that these are separated. So I graft these, I graft the scaled ones, I merge them just to keep things tidy. Bam, bam, and I connect them to the loft. Minimize that. Loft still doesn't work, and it doesn't work because the data trees probably have different lengths. Of course they do. Why do they? Uh, all of that is fine. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, simplify this and simplify this. Ah, now it seems that it's going to work. Yeah, it, it does work. Lofts take a long time to calculate, though. Wonder why. Why are why? It's it's literally well maybe that's because there's a lot of them, right? And also these they're too spiky, so I will change the amplitude of by how much they are being moved away to like I'll half it to five. Because these uh, compression only based structures, they don't really need like uh, glue or screws or anything like that. These are just positioning holes, right? 
So that, uh, what if we kind of go to loft options and change this to straight sections? Uh, will it be faster? No, it's kind of the same same thing, right? Yeah. What if we change this to developable? Oh, it just breaks. Okay, so we don't change this to developable. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we just do, do straight here. Commit. 1.3 seconds. Still pretty fine. It's, it's okay. So we have now um, one spiky boy per branch. We don't want that. We want two spiky boys per branch so that we can join them up with our boundary surfaces right here. So I will use trim tree to kind of bring them back into kind of merge them into one branch here one branch here one branch here right so trim tree does that um and now yeah. now i think 300 600 yeah i think it's gonna be pretty straightforward just oops just and they're doing this and merging them together and doing B rep join on them. Bam, like that. Um, said that, maybe we can kind of join everything up into one block because I also have like the top and the bottom somewhere here, right? Where are they? They're going to be here, so if I just do cull index, and my index that I cull is 0, right? Because 0 is here, and here I want everything except 0, right? So I cull index, and I just remove the perimeter, so I, I'm left with the top and the bottom, and I kind of drag them out here. Maybe I can do a better job at it, vrep like that, so that it's cleaner. Drag them out right here, hide that. So now I have like the top and the bottom for each element, right? We simplify. I have uh, the perimeter for each element, but it's uh, every surface of the perimeter is its own, it's in its own branch. So I need to trim tree. Um, I need to kind of bring them back into, yeah, into a single branch. And then I have the spiky boys, which are kind of in between. So my depth of, of the trim tree needs just to be two to bring it back to the level of the element and not the level of a face. And now I think we are golden. I think we can go for it. So these three things, I just merge them up into one big happy family. I use brep join, join them up. And here I have one, wait, 75. Yes, here I have 75. Um, bricks let me just flatten them out uh, and create a custom preview for them you know because it's nice and create a nice color swatch as well um so these guys will be blue pretty blue well that's not a pretty blue that's a little bit calmer that's that's a nicer blue and let me hide everything, literally everything, except the final preview. Okay, so we have spiky boys. Oh, yeah, they need to be capped. Cap. Cap holes for each brep. We just create those hexagons there. And now we look at it. Now it's good. Now it is good. Because we didn't have that hole. Cap. Okay. So we have this done. Uh, same thing for the female joints, only that now female joints will need to kind of follow along from the um, hexagons that we have here. And do we really need them to be hexagons? Can they be like sides? Uh, can we have like uh, pentagons? Maybe that's going to be faster, huh? Doesn't seem like it's faster. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's faster. Okay, so 
Um, let's do the same thing for the female join. So here I'm just going to kind of, here are the female ones. And I will just use list item, right, to get the perimeters for the female joints. And they will need. Shit, how are we going to do that? So each curve. So each polygon that we have right here each polygon will need to find where it needs to be oriented on the female uh, block surface on the closest one, right so we somehow need to figure that one out um i think we can do that with these points right yeah i think we can do that with these points so let me just for now grab those points. So we have a point list here. Okay. We do have a point list. But it's kind of kind of super structured and these faces are not well uh, rather the, the, these faces and these uh, these points have separate separate geometries. Can we do something a little bit more unorthodox, so to say? Can we do... Can we take this lo these lofts and work with them? I think we can. So I will take a B-Rep from these lofts and kind of use them on the female... Um, fem uh, female blocks okay um this loft if i get naked uh boundary can i do that no i can't okay um, then i'll just do edges edges uh b-rep edges i'll get the naked ones i'll join them up uh, i'll measure their length or maybe it's always going to give me Autom maybe it's automatically always going to give me uh the, the the larger one at at the start or at the end it seems like the larger one is always the second one in the list which is great okay, that's exactly what i want super okay so this is where the large edge is going to be crv like that um, but I don't want them to be in a data structure. I just want them to be floating about in space. So I will flatten, flatten the B-Rep. I don't care about them floating in space. <clears throat> and this is kind of in the way, so I'm going to hide it. So now I have these curves and they are just... Wait, why are they still... No, 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 just be flattened, please, flatten. They're just a list of curves, 600 curves in total. And I have these faces, right, which I will deconstruct as well. Deconstruct B-Rep. There we go. So we have a bunch of faces. And these curves need to, f need to know to which face do they belong, right? So I need to... Oh, this is going to be hell. Um, can we do proximity checks? No, we can't. Can we do um, polygon centroid and uh, surface CP? That's that's the face, right? Uh, that's that's the surface, and that's the point from which we check, and then we get a, a shit ton of them. But one of them is going to be the smallest one, right? Right? <clears throat> I think that's how it works. 
So one of them is the smallest. And then I get the UV point on each surface. So if I just sort, sort the distance, and together with it, I sort the UV points, the one that's right at the top of the list, list item, the one that's right at the top of the list is going to be the UV point that's closest, right? Right? I think so. And then we just use evaluate surface. So these surfaces get evaluated with the UV point that's closest. And it shit, it doesn't work. But wait, if we do reparameterize, then it still doesn't work. <laughs> or maybe it does. Wait. Point. Can I please hide a bunch of shit and just see it? No, it doesn't work. Why don't you work? You give me four points. You give me four points. Why do you give me four points? Um okay, let, let's look at the logic. Four surfaces. Six hundred points for each surface. Oh so these need to be two of them. Like that, and then it should work, but it doesn't. But it doesn't. Okay, a little bit of a hiccup. Let's check. So, this is the distance like first two distances that we get, and these are the UV points, UV coordinates of the closest point that we get. Um, so I have no idea why does this not work, because it seems like it should. Or maybe is it just uh, 111, 149. Everything seems to be fine here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I know. I know the culprit. This needs to be grafted. Okay. This is grafted, then we get that, we get a shit ton, like 180,000 UV points, but we just use, we just take two for each, and now, we just merge real quick. You can always uh, skip ahead, by the way, if, if you're annoyed by me trying to figure it out. Uh, and not stopping the the, the recording. I, but I think for some of you, it's going to be kind of important to see, um, you know, that places where I get stuck, I guess. Um, so that is what we get. One, zero, 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 one. Uh-huh. And then three, zero. Okay. Uh, can I simplify this? Yes, I can. Okay. So one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, three. That's for four. Can this be simplified? Uh huh. And for some reason, these points are all over the fucking stratosphere. Does this not need to be? Oh my god. Okay. 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 Booma. Sure. So this does not need to be. Um, rasterized. So. Uh, can I also do something like? I think it's better to not use sort list, but rather for every surface, finding points uh, that are closer than. Um, distance is smaller than. 0 0.1 millimeters. So distance smaller than 0 0.1 millimeters, and I cull the pattern. 
but I use this list to call the pattern and like that and I get two sometimes I get two sometimes I get zero yeah this is much cleaner uh, it's it's gonna be much much better okay so we simplified this yeah this is much better okay uh, so we cleaned it up a bit. Uh, so now we have the 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 the, 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 the thing, right? The, we we have the the planes here that that we can use, and we will kind of rebuild the same same thing, right? We will rebuild the polygon, and we're we're going to kind of redo the same thing. So I'm just going to kind of really quickly skip skip through this um, this step, and then and try to do uh, to do it as fast as possible. Right, so that's my plane. We have the hexagon again. Everything should be kind of the same, right? Yeah, uh, we move it. Just, I'm lazy. I just want to do that. Like that. <laughs> Copy paste. Easy game. Easy. Okay, so we move it. Here and the amplitude of movement is uh, the n vector, and what what is it being grafted with? Oh my God, oh, it's being grafted with the original one, right? So this one, like that. So I'm just kind of reusing the same script here, and they are being moved, I believe, into the correct position because these guys are sticking out and these are sticking in shit okay uh amplitude needs to be negative for this one negative and actually just to be safe i will reuse the same slider from not not from here from here right from 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 here there we go i'll, I'll reuse the same slider just so that we don't you know, make any mistakes and i think this can be kind of optimized much much better but at this point i just want to finish this and have fun with the definition itself so we have the loft uh, we do the you know we do, we do the same procedure as we did for the male joints only that we're doing it now for the female ones so we have the list item i also need that same cull uh, call index zero. So everything except the perimeter of the brick. Where is it? There it is. Bam. The top and the bottom of the brick. Um, and also here, maybe I can kind of do it this way. Like that. This is the male joint, right? This is us borrowing the hexagons from the male joint and projecting, or not projecting, but kind of finding the points on the female uh, bricks uh, to, to create the female joints. This is us working with female bricks and getting lofts and simplify. And here I can use trim tree like that trim tree with depth of two as i did before so that we our data structure is for each element itself we have a single branch yeah perfect okay so we have that now i need holes in my perimeters right so Where's, where's, where's my perimeter faces? There they are. I will just get wires. Wireframe for every face. And I will grab the polygons as well. Sometimes two, sometimes zero. Wait, I'm, I'm just kind of in, in investigating. Uh, that's for every face, right? And that is also for every face. Okay. So we can merge this and this together and create oh that's nasty so i simplify simplify just to clean up the data tree 
and we get our curves into kind of for every face we get the curves into a separate branch and then we can do a uh, boundary boundary surfaces blam bam okay so the surfaces are done now and they can also come in here Whoop. come in here and i believe they will need a little bit of smooth yeah they they will also need to be trimmed but not with depth of two but only with depth of one so now they are also the data tree is uh, a branch per element not per element face okay so we have that done uh last one is the top and the bottom and this one is just i believe this one is just going to be let me just kind of make it cleaner grab a b rep uh drag it out like so double click to make a to create a relay and uh make it like so just just i i want it to be cleaner okay so this and these guys are yeah th these are just straight up i can just simplify just to make it a little bit cleaner um but these are fine so now we merge first second third we merge them we use uh rep join there we go and we use the magical cap holes which we will flatten out and everything's a closed freaking b rep Whoopa. custom preview for the female elements these ones will be green or maybe red pink red let's do red <clears throat> red is nice we have female joints where are the curves coming from under oh, and we have male joints we are done uh, that was a, a long one <clears throat> okay let's have fun with it and then we will call it a day just to show you how you can now operate with this definition and we don't need this one anymore as well yay my notes are now gone this is the whole definition i'll just save it and we will investigate what we can change with it so if i go to show um i can for instance mess around with with the, the structure itself right so i can let's let's do something something real fast um let's do a bridge right yeah let's do a bridge i'll delete this one i'll mirror from here to here and now we will just oh yeah and i need to mirror these two <laughs> mirror from here to here and now we will once we kind of reference this in this should be a pretty cool bridge right and maybe just just maybe we can take this rotate it like so position it here let me hide that for a bit so that it's not in the way position it here and now kind of put push the points where 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 i want them to be so here uh come on point give 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 the <laughs> points on F10 uh, from here to here. Everything needs to connect corner to corner, but I think you already know that at this point. Right? So you have that. This is going to, of course, relax towards, uh, towards this side, but we are fine with that. Whatever. 
a wee weird little definition here. Let's see. Um, curve is complaining, and also I assume this curve will be complaining. So first, let's do set multiple curves for all of these, like that. Uh, less, actually less uh, polygons, please, because uh, that's gonna that's gonna crash my computer if we do too many. Uh, three is not enough. Four. Let's do four. Four seems to be a good, good middle ground. So we have that. Uh, so that all works. And now we need to select, 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 select these four reference points for anchoring. We have them, or reference curves for anchoring. We have them selected. We run the simulation. We take a gander, take a look at it. This is how it relaxes. As expected, it moves to, you know, that resting position naturally uh, we play and we run the simulation again this time with inflation and we take a look uh, do i want i don't really want it to inflate that much uh, so i'll kind of make it a little bit more a little bit calmer hmm i don't want to have like one additional Hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to have one additional stick, uh, like a leg going out from it. Do we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's. Uh, so to do that, I will just look at the mesh, not at this mesh. Where is it? Uh, mesh edit. Yeah, yeah. For instance, this mesh right here. And I'll just draw out. Uh, anchoring region for let's say uh, this this should do the trick for this area right so one two three these three points will be also locked in place uh, I re-reference right here that multiple uh, we recalculate this bad boy. We play. Right, you can see that now it's locked there. We recalculate this bad boy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Something like this is a little bit cooler, I think. Yeah, looks looks fine. It's fine. We will continue working with this. Some sort of a dome thing, structure, system going on. Still pretty symmetrical, but... Yeah, whatever, who cares. Will it look cool in the renders? I think we can make it look cool in the renders. Yeah. Or the thumbnail, you know. Um, okay, so we have that. Data dam, we press the magical play button. It does the whole thing. It's crashing though. Why is it crashing? Oh, it's not crashing. It's just super slow. At, at calculating. But it is saying that it's running. Uh, I'll reset and let it run a little bit more. Seems to be good. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Everything is fine. Uh, we stop the simulation. We press the play button again. We take a gander at this oh yeah and this this is starting to look real nice you know the the paneling and so on it's looking real good i'll need to figure out some sort of a cool thumbnail angle for it um and yeah this is the last one for the joints right yolo let's take a look this will take a little bit of time to generate. Oh, actually, it's already done. Bam. Oh, beauty. What a beauty, huh? And there we go. There we have it. We have a freaking building. Okay. Let's bake this bad boy out. Uh, 
yeah, sure, to the default layer. So it's here. So I will not show you how to kind of position the panels flat on the ground. If you manage to follow along the tutorial, you'll figure out how to do that by yourselves. If you don't know, I do have a few uh, tutorials on my channel where I kind of show it. So if you're a long, long time viewer, try to remember, I guess. Um, let me hide that or even disable rendering of that. And also same thing here, disable rendering of that. Why the hell are you inside out though? Oh, you're open, Cap. <gasps> Mistakes. So these ones, okay, yeah, uh, I, I remember that it does that. Uh, these ones are the ones that it didn't manage to close. And we can find, uh, let me just isolate. Isolate, zoom selected. It's usually the female joints, and usually it's. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Usually it's where um, if, if if these joints don't. Um, explain. If these hexagons uh, don't don't fit, right? Don't. If the second hexagon doesn't fit on the face, it's going to complain, right? So it's basically joint based, it's not geometry based, but I think if we kind of join them up, oh wait, they are joined up. Uh, duplicate border, zoom selected. That's the border that has been duplicated, right? Which is super weird that it does that. So let me just delete it and try to Duplicate border for these two, create planner SRF from this. It has been created and now join them up. And now it's fine. Right, so you kind of fix it with Rhino. It's going to constantly kind of make these, these mistakes. We don't really give a shit um, that, that it does that. Um, that it makes those mistakes. But yeah, uh, this is this is what we what we have. Uh, this is what we end up with. Arctic view, I guess. I'm gonna go and do a freaking a render now, I guess. To find a nice, nice angle for the render. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm messing around. So uh, this this kind of structure is something that my wife uh, also 3D printed and tried to assemble. And uh, before we finish, I'm going to play, instead of showing you a render, I'm going to play a video of that and hope you'll uh, enjoy the conclusion of this kind of structure uh, being assembled without any, any glue, just from compression. Try that one, and I'll see you next time.
I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I wake. I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. 